brother, sister, uh, today's Saturday, and uh, we really want to make sure that we come up with a new, a new video. So, but you know, this video is all about politics, and uh, I'm just want to show you guys how politics is. It's kind of confused, right? Why everybody doing politics? They're also doing their business also, they take care of their business. So if you look at the former president right now, the way he's talking now is something to me like, hey, he feel like he's not going to win the election. He, uh, he talking about uh, the vice president, how she going to be changed the Supreme Court, how she going to change it to 21, to 23, 21 sound better, but 23 doesn't sound better. We're not going to let that really happen. But it, it, it looked like the former president is start losing confidence, right? Because he said that uh, if Kamala Harris get in as a vice president, not one of the president, if she's get in, she gonna come back all the way, all blah 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 blah. It's like the way he was having confidence with uh, with it, President that, um, President Biden. President Biden, it's something to me with Kamala Harris. It's like it's done thing looked at different now. And I'm going to let you listen to them. And guy, once again, I'm going to ask you guy again a favor. Guy, please, guy, if you like the video, subscribe to the video also. Subscribe, share, like. Guy, give it a will support, guy. You guys refuse to. A lot of you guys watch the video, but they don't give you, they don't subscribe to you. And remember that guy, you, we, we all in YouTube, YouTube Disney report say that how many people will subscribe to you, and like they say 87% people doesn't subscribe to you, only 13%, sometimes they say only 5% is, is subscribe, only 95% people doesn't subscribe to your channel. I mean, I don't think you subscribe to me because you like me. I don't think you subscribe to me because you, 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 uh, you want to, you want to do for me a favor if you subscribe to me i will subscribe to you also if you support me i will support you back i will do my best even i'm a i always have a busy schedule but i'm always create a tie to go and support all my friend guy i do my best and i when you gotta do support do will support guy don't be fake be real be real guy be realistic guy be real it's like a lot of you guys go and look the video for a minute and walk away, not even subscribe to the video. It's not fair. When I go when I go support you, when I go to your channel, what I did, I subscribe to your channel and I do the thumbs up and also I leave you a comment. And I know if I don't leave you no comment, the, uh, the subscriber don't gonna stay. It's gonna go away. Guy, do a real support guy. Be honest guy, be fair. I mean, if you support somebody, you wanna support somebody, let's, let, um, Support them well, guy. I mean, uh, what now, guy? I'm, I'm really, I'm like over, over a hundred, uh, hundred thousand subscribers. It's not like I'm pleasing. So, I mean, it's not because YouTube never give you a limit. Like, if you have one thousand, hundred thousand, you know how to get more. You can, more you can get, it's better. You can get more you can get. It's better for you guys. Let's be a real support, guys. Support and share the video. Today we go back again to the former president Donald Trump. And if you guys. I'm gonna let you listen to him. How he talk now is like the confident that he had before with uh, with the uh, with with President Biden. He look like he look like he lose confident. I don't know why, but the way he talk, uh, he's talking. He lose confident. He talk about his business, be kind. You got everybody know about that. Be kind. They say make money, and they do also make sure they do their business also. So let, let's listen to what he say, guys. Listen to it, guys necessarily conservative but they did the right thing that's what's supposed to be happening and that's what's happened they've done the right thing but they can't pack the court well i think when the director appeared before on this probably haven't been finalized i mean they're doing a lot of research and they're doing a lot of FBI following Ray's testimony, claiming the agency never even checked. It just never ends with these people. They raid Mar-a-Lago. They do things so bad, so bad. Our country is so sick, but uh, they apologize. We accept their apology. The FBI is still examining the bullet fragments found at the Pennsylvania rally site, but reportedly is seeking an interview with former President Trump to provide a victim statement. In Washington, Marianne Rafferty, Fox News. All right, and we will be back here in just moments. 
<coughs> sorry guys, sorry. Guys, this uh and uh um, I'm live now from Fox taking in another I want you guys to know that as we continue guys, to wait it's, uh, for it's the Bitcoin like, um, conference in Nashville. I want everybody to know that guy. Politics it's not a bad thing, guys. Politics is not confused for real. The they make it confused. Amendment. They said we can do it the nice way or we can do it the hard way, Joe. That's what happened. I know I know as many people on that side as I know on our side, so to speak. But that's what happened. They said we can do it the hard way. We can do it the easy way. 25th Amendment if you don't go. And he said, oh, I'll go. And now they're trying to make him into a brave hero. He's so brave. Last night he made, or the other night he made a speech behind the beautiful Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. And look, I'm not looking to knock. I want to give people credit or not credit. It was horrible. And then you turn on to like CNN and MSDNC, the worst. they just horrible. Yeah, when the, I hope and they... they're saying one of the finest speeches we've ever seen. I mean, Churchillian, somebody said Churchill, Winston Churchill, no. Winston had it on him a little bit. It was so bad, and they, they pretended it was good. And they're doing the same thing with her. She was a bum three weeks ago. She was a bum. A failed vice president and a failed administration with millions of people crossing, and she was the border czar. Now they're trying to say she never was the border czar. She had nothing to do with the border. She was the border czar. They're trying to take it. They're deleting it all over the place. They want to take it because we have the worst border in history. And three and a half years ago, we had the best border that we've ever had. In fact, my chart that I looked over to the right, that chart, you know, the famous chart that showed we had the best numbers in history, at least recorded history on the border. That chart probably saved my life. Can you believe it? Because I looked over. If I didn't look over, I got a problem. Wasn't too good anyway. Did you see the FBI today apologize? They said, well, it might have been a bullet, but it might have been glass. So really, where did the glass come from? Or it might have been shrapnel. Where did the shrapnel come from? No, they then said it was a bullet. They just try and do it. It, it just never ends with these people. They raid Mar-a-Lago. They do things so bad, so bad. Our country is so sick. But uh, they apologize. We accept their apology. So now we have a... Okay, let's 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 stop right here. And um, that's why I say I'm a little confused in here. I'm a little confused here. It's like the former president Donald Trump. He don't have no 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 confidence with his own intelligence, with his own FBI, CIA, whatever the Secret Service. He make them feel like I don't know. I hey mean, come on now. Why would uh, why would you really want somebody like that to become a president? Is that going to be more problem? Is that I mean, I don't understand that, guys. Just listen, let's just listen the way he talks. Just listen, guys. Listen to it. New candidate to defeat the most incompetent, unpopular, and far left vice president in American history. That's what she is. The most incompetent but certainly the most far left together four months from now we're going to defeat kamala harris who a short time ago strongly fought to defund the police and the radical left democrat party we're going to take back that very beautiful white house and we're going to make america great again guaranteed and it's going to go fast With your vote, I will defend religious liberty in all of its forms. I will protect Christians in our schools, in our military, in our government, in our workplaces, in our hospitals, and in our public square. And I will also protect other religions. We want that, right? Other religions. And we will bring our country back together, one nation under God. Okay, he was talking about... Uh when they try to assassinate him and then they coming out they say he say they say maybe it's not a bullet maybe it's a glass is broken 
is just that it's like he say he's like he said well they do apologize to him he has said they apologize thing never end with them they come to his house they were his house they went to uh new york they do the same thing to him and everything like that I mean, to me, when he's talking like that, it's like he had no confidence with his own, with his own country, with his own intelligence, with his own uh, uh, secret service or FBI, whatever it is that. But I don't understand that. Okay, whatever is whatever. So let's listen to it, and then we'll move to different from there. But if radical, liberal Kamala Harris gets in, and by the way, there are numerous ways of saying her name. They were explaining to me, you can say Kamala, you can say Kamala. I said, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter what I say. I couldn't care less if I mispronounce it or not. I couldn't care less. Some people think I mispronounce it on purpose, but actually I've heard it said about seven different ways. There are a lot of ways. There are a lot of ways. But if radical liberal Kamala Harris gets in, you will have the exact opposite effect. Harris will appoint hundreds of extreme far-left judges to forcibly impose crazy San Francisco liberal values on Americans nationwide. Now, you've seen what's happened to San Francisco. It was the best city maybe in our entire country 15 years ago, and now it's barely livable. That's what she, and she's the one that started. She was an original defunder. She was a defunder of the police. She said, let's defund the police. She was the first one to start it. But now, of course, she's so, she's tough. She did not. They always, one thing about a politician, I guess including me, you always go back to your original thought. Now, my original thoughts were very good. You that like I believe my original that. Thought? I believe that. That's true. That's what, that's, that's, what I about, I like, that's what I like about him. He always true. say it is what it is. You always so go back to that's him. What, and she That's went like back about to him, and she will go back. If she ever got in, she will go back to those, all of those horrible original thoughts that she had. She'll appoint hardcore Marxists to the Supreme Court to shred our Constitution and all of our religious liberties. She will do that, absolutely. She will try as hard as she can to add as many justices as possible to the U.S. Supreme Court. We don't want that to happen, do we? We want, we like our nine justices the way they are. We don't want to have 17. I've heard numbers 21. 21 sounds like a great number. What about 23? They want to have an odd number. That's the only thing we agree on. In other words, she wants to pack the court, which is their number one agenda. And we can't let that happen. We're not going to let that happen. We're not going to have anybody added. We're going to do it the way we've done it for many many years that's really a stopper it's a stopper the supreme court and by the way you can take a look there have been many things that have happened over the last few years where there's been great uniformity on things that aren't necessarily conservative but they did the right thing that's what's supposed to be happening and that's what's happened they've done the right thing but they can't pack the court the hordes of illegal aliens storming across our borders will exceed 40 or 50 million by the time they're finished. That's what they want. They want millions. You know, the number, I believe the real number already, or very close, is 20 million people have come across our border. Think of it. Over a very short period of time, with four more years of Harris, who was worse than Joe Biden in a true sense and far more liberal, America will be decimated by migrant crime, demolished by fascism, ravaged by rampant inflation, and impoverished by the complete obliteration of America. Okay, I want I want everybody to understand this. I mean, uh, the way he used to uh, talk to Joe Biden, and if you listen to his voice. It's like he feel like he, he he don't have the same he don't have the same confidence he had before with Joe Biden, and then why he keeps saying if Kamala Harris get in as if she won the presidency, that's what she gonna do, that's what she gonna do, she gonna do the Supreme Court, she gonna do this, the border, blah blah blah, and everything. Why would he say it that way? I mean, if you you think you gonna win the election, you should not. Without a doubt, you should not be like thinking about somebody might, might, somebody might, somebody might. The way he saw with Kamala Harris, now everybody could look at it as a fear for real. He had a fear, 
he might lose the election. The way he saw, the way he talked about uh, the vice president. And um, guy, I want you guys to listen to it and pay attention to it. So you, or everybody's file on politics. You should pay attention to what he said, everything he said, how he said it. It's his diff, he saw different before as when Joe Biden was there. In energy, more. they don't want any fossil fuel, no matter what. In other words, good luck. I hope you enjoy walking to work. You know what makes electricity, right? Fossil fuel. They don't understand that. You know, it comes from someplace, right? It comes from fossil fuel. I'm here tonight because we must never let that happen. Our task is to defeat socialism, to defeat Marxism, communism, to defeat the cartels. Soon after that vote of confidence, Obama hit the campaign trail together with Clinton. Are you fired up? You who've been with me from the beginning of this incredible journey to be the first to know that I'm with her. I am fired up and I cannot wait to get out there and campaign for Hillary. I'm with her. With those words, then President Barack Obama throwing his full support behind Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. I don't think there's ever been someone so qualified to hold this office. Soon after that vote of confidence, Obama hit the campaign trail together with Clinton. Are you fired up? You ready to go? This is a choice between whether we are going to cling to some imaginary past or whether we're going to reach for the future. Then First Lady Michelle Obama threw her weight behind Clinton too at the DNC convention. We need to knock on every door. We need to get out every vote. We need to pour every last ounce of our passion and our strength and our love for this country into electing Hillary Clinton as president of the United States of America. This is my The Obamas amped up their own star power at this Pennsylvania event, where Bon Jovi joined them and the Clintons on stage. Just days before the 2016 election, Michelle Obama appeared with Clinton in the battleground state of North Carolina. You guys are pretty fired up, right? I like that. This was the first time the two women shared the stage. Hillary has done her job. Now we need to do our job and get her elected president of the United States. Part of Michelle Obama's motivation to campaign against Donald Trump, his false claims that Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States. She wrote in her book that Trump's claim carried with it bigotry and xenophobia. Adding Donald Trump with his loud and reckless innuendos was putting my family's safety at risk. And for this, I'd never forgive him. She spoke with Oprah about it in 2018. I don't think he knew what he was doing. That for him, it was a game. That motivation continued in 2020. I'm so proud to endorse Joe Biden for president of the United States. I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a president right now. An endorsement, then stump speeches, even in the midst of the pandemic. I, I love Joe Biden, and he will be a great president. This was Flint, Michigan. My friend, a real leader, the next president of the United States of America, Joe Biden. In October 2020, Michelle Obama lent her voice to the closing argument for Biden. Search your hearts and your conscience and then vote for Joe Biden like your lives depend on it. And on the eve of the election, Barack Obama fired up voters in Miami. We will elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And we will leave no doubt about what this country we love stands for. Let's get to work, Florida. Let's bring this home. I love you, Miami. Honk if you're fired up. Randy Kay, CNN. Palm Beach County, Florida. The vice president speaking to donors a short while ago, laying out a vision for the very limited time until election day. And joining us now, the national coach. Uh, throughout the entire week, you have seen all of the coalitions of the Democratic Party come together. And now today, 
with the announcement of the endorsement of President Obama, we are really one team, one fight, and ready to go. So you're going to see a hundred and you know a couple of days sprint, one that you've never seen before. I think most of us that are political junkies have never seen what we're in right now. So we're making history together. Uh, but this week has been a great uh, week for the vice president. It showed her organizational skills. Of course, you saw her on the world stage. So wasn't why they keep talking about uh, the vice president when uh, Joe Biden stepped aside and he stepped down he's not running for re-election and he's come up with his vice president which is uh kamala Harris, and now and uh, president of uh, the former president Obama, president obama he never admit he don't want uh he doesn't want um kamala Harris to run for president he feel like he, he, he don't have enough confidence in kamala Harris. he feel like kamala Harris cannot be defeat the former president cannot kind of defeat the former president, which is Donald Trump. But at the end, uh, they did come together. They all support her, and that's why I like about the politics here. Even the fight, fight, fight. But at the end, they did come together and come up with a solution. It don't matter what. They all fight for one country. They all love this country. So let's listen to it again. Uh, with Bibi Netanyahu, and of course you've seen her now raise more money than anybody's raised in this short a period of time and gather as many volunteers as has ever been gathered uh, in the history of politics in the country. So we're off to a big start, but uh, this is going to be a close election. It was always going to be a close election. Everybody's got to show up, got to do the work, and uh, based on the vice president's speech today, we have a pathway to get it done. So tell us about the pathway. What are the swing states that you're all focused on? Well, you can recall, I think, I mean, last Sunday, it was however many hours, 96 or, or, or so hours ago, when everybody was starting to shrink the map. The map has now been blown open again. And I think that all of the swing states that were there before the debate performance are still back in play. They're actually more in play than they were before. And we are going to make sure that we hit all of those. Now, what has been happening over the last four, five, six, seven months, an organization that the vice president helped build and is going to inherit, is we have thousands of offices on the ground in those swing states. And now they're, they're bursting at the seams and they are ready to go. And so we will execute the plan as it was designed. Of course, the vice president will change it as she sees fit. So you unite the party, you raise the police. The, the, the issue behind their behavior and that when you're dealing with mental health, when you're dealing with substance abuse, when you try to find alternatives about what this country we love stands for. Let's get to work, Florida. Let's bring this home. Okay. So uh what happened is it's like um I love you, Miami. Hulk up your fire. It's up. like um Randy K, CNN, Palm Beach County, Florida. The good thing about it, guy, it's all about it's like they all have to, they all come together. God bless the USA. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. This is a nice crowd. We're going to be talking a little bit about a wonderful thing called religion tonight. Is that okay? A little bit more than normal, and that's good. That's really good. And I just want to say hello to everybody and to Turning Point for the fantastic job that Turning Point does. Thank you very much, Turning Point. This is a great group. This is from corner to corner. This room is packed, and there are a lot of people outside. But we have to forget about them, right? We just have to be. It's the way life goes. But I'm thrilled to be back with so many proud, hardworking American patriots who believe in faith and family, God and country. Thank you very much. And we want to thank each and every one of the believers in this room for your prayers and your incredible support. I really did appreciate it. Something was working, that we know. Something was working, so I thank you very much. And I stand before you tonight thanks to the power of prayer and the grace of Almighty God. As I think you can see, I've recovered well and, in fact, just took off the last bandage off of my ear. Oh. I just got it off. I took it off for this group. 
I don't know why I did that for this group, but that's it. I think that's it. I hope that's it. Let me also thank Charlie Kirk for hosting this event and for his leadership, as well as Bishop Aubrey Shines. Thank you, Bishop. A great friend of mine, a tremendous woman of faith, Pastor Paula White is here, and she's been so incredible wherever you may be, Paula. Where is, where is Paula? She is fantastic, Thanks, Paula. Pastor Jensen Franklin, one of the biggest, one of the most powerful, one of the greats. Thank you, Pastor. He's been with us from day one. Pastor Lorenzo Sewell, whose church I visited in Detroit, and this guy can speak. Where is he? He can speak. He spoke at the convention. And I'll tell you, nobody wanted to follow him. Where is he? Where is that pastor? Whoa, hello, pastor. Nobody wanted to follow him, I can tell you that. There was the people said, I'll pass. You were fantastic. Thank you very much, pastor. It was an honor to be in Detroit. And we were in serious Detroit, right? That was the real Detroit. Thank you very much. So respected, such a wonderful man. And speaking of respect, Secretary Ben Carson. What a great guy. Nobody like him. Former ESPN anchor Sage Steele. Thank you, Sage. Sage has been terrific. She's been terrific. Amazing person. Another amazing person is a man named Peter Navarro. Peter Navarro is asking where they stand on the 2024 presidential race. Our exclusive WDIV Detroit News poll is in, and it shows a dead tie between Donald Trump and Vice President Donald, uh, Kamala Harris. Excuse me. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm DeMond Fernandez in for Devin Skillion tonight. Our Jacqueline Francis has been digging through the results, and she joins us live with what we're learning and reaction from our pollster, Richard Suba. Good evening, Jacqueline. So much has happened in politics lately, from an assassination attempt to a change at the top of the Democratic ticket. And this poll covers it all. The results are in, and this is where the presidential race stands in Michigan, according to our recent poll. We find this race now to be dead even. 41 to 41, Robert F. Kennedy is taking 10% of the vote. Any poll of Michigan right now has got to include Kennedy in it because he's taking a sizable chunk of the vote. Richard Zuba with Glenn Gariff Group said the poll was conducted between Monday and Wednesday of this week, surveying 600 likely voters in Michigan. All the polling we have been doing this year in Michigan has shown Joe Biden losing to Donald Trump in Michigan. You know, our January poll for WDIV and the Detroit News, the, the first one of the season, had Biden down by eight points. Suddenly, within three days, this race is dead even. On a scale from one to 10, voter motivation levels are in the mid nines. Voters are jacked through the roof to vote right now. I'm surprised there, some of them aren't in line already. According to the poll, 88.3% of people agree with Joe Biden's decision not to seek re-election. The poll also tested Governor Gretchen Whitmer as a hypothetical running mate for Kamala Harris, giving the ticket a two-point bump. When it comes to Donald Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, there wasn't much movement. Four or five percent who said they were more likely to vote for the ticket because of J.D. Vance. Four or five percent who said they were less likely to vote for the ticket because of J.D. Vance. Everybody else said it had no impact on them. It also asked if the recent assassination attempt on Trump has changed how people plan to vote in November. Well over 90 percent of voters said it had no impact on them or how they vote because of that attempt. Does that surprise you? Uh, no, because Donald Trump is going to get the number Donald Trump gets. And what we're seeing in this poll is it is consistently, he is polling at 41, 42%. No matter who you put up against him. Raced Donald Trump's lead that he had had over Biden when he was at the top of the ticket, it was Lee that he had had over Biden. And to win. She's essentially erased Donald Trump's lead that he had had over Biden. And it is my intention to go out and earn this nomination and to win. She's essentially erased Donald Trump's lead that he had had over Biden when he was at the top of the ticket. It wasn't just that vote. What are the major takeaways from the poll? The majority of people say they are more motivated to vote with Harris stepping in as a likely nominee. 
what we've seen in the public are the major takeaways from the poll. The majority of people say they are more motivated to vote with Harris. Um, was necessarily gaining support, but rather Joe Biden's support was slipping to a degree that suggested there might be some part of his base that might not come out on election day. Now what we're seeing is that Kamala Harris being at the top of the ticket seems to really have awakened those coalitions that put them in the White House in the first place. And you're not seeing quite as much slippage in support compared to 2020. Should Harris win the nomination as expected, she would but rather Joe Biden's support was slipping to a degree that suggested there might be some part of his base that might not come out on election day. Now what we're seeing is that Kamala Harris being- The majority of people said that it wouldn't affect their decision to support her, but were less likely to say the same about most. Some positive signs for President Trump as well. And the polls suggest that this race is gonna be incredibly close through election day. About 51% of voters said that the immigration and his stewardship of the economy, two areas that are really key for voters and areas where they think Donald Trump would be better if he were elected president. A vote for Kamala is a vote for four more years of dishonesty, incompetence, weakness, and failure. So I think you'll continue to see through election day, Trump and his campaign really try to convince this record just as much as he would. Okay, if you're smart enough, why would he say that? Why would he now he keeps saying if Kamala Harris win the election, it's four years of non confident Why he keeps saying that? He never said that when Joe Biden was with him. He feel like he gonna win it. And when they change it to Kamala Harris, he called it easy win for him in November. He called it easy win for him in November. So now, every day he's talking about, he say, if Kamala Harris win, if Kamala win, if Kamala win. That's what he keeps saying. That means if, if you're smart enough, you should look at him that way. He loves confidence. That means he feel like Kamala Harris is going to defeat him. The way he talk. With President Joe Biden dropping his re-election bid, the nearly 4,000 delegates who are pledged to him are now free to pick another candidate to run in November. And that candidate seems very likely to be Vice President Kamala Harris. But technically, other Democrats still have time to challenge her and try to win delegates. Delegates can do, and I'll quote President Biden here, whatever the hell they want to do. A lot of people uh, would like to see a mini primary. So here's how the party rules work and what the Democratic National Convention means for November. When President Biden won primary after primary this year, what he really won was a bunch of delegates. These delegates who are elected by their peers are the people who officially choose their party's presidential nominee. 18 votes. 26 votes. 46 votes for the next president of the United States. This year, Democrats have nearly 4,000 delegates. And on top of that, more than 700 Democratic superdelegates who are essentially party VIPs. I like to think of them as the people who govern with the president. All the United States senators who are Democrats, all the United States House members, Democratic governors and members of the Democratic National Committee are superdelegates. With Biden exiting the race, the nearly 4,000 regular delegates are that's exactly we ought to say that you could be very popular in the election in the country but if he doesn't win this what you call the super delegate side this called electoral college you're not going to win the election if you look at him and if you say democrat have over 700 so that mean you could look at him that way. Do the former President Donald Trump have a chance to win the re-election? It looks like it's not going to be that easy. It looks like it's not going to be happening to him, for him. ...are now unpledged or unbound. Harris has said that she intends to unite the party and many state delegations and prominent Democrats have begun lining up behind her. And it is my intention to go out and earn this nomination and to win. If no other Democrat decides to challenge Harris, 
these delegates will likely support her, either by virtual vote or by a vote on the convention floor. And the convention would move ahead pretty drama-free. But if others do decide to run, the process could become more like a mini primary. In order to get their name on the roll call vote and make speeches, a candidate would have to circulate a petition and get more than 300 delegates to sign it. Then to win the nomination, these candidates would have to get a majority of the delegates to vote for them. If there's multiple candidates and you have this compressed season, you could probably bet it might go more than one vote because you'd want to see who has... ...is the de facto nominee, and all of those other senators have endorsed her campaign, with one exception, Bernie Sanders. Earlier this week, the independent Vermont senator and progressive icon told reporters on Capitol Hill, quote, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that she becomes president, end quote, but stop short of formally endorsing her. The Vermont senator Bernie Sanders joins me now. Senator, good to see you. I want to talk politics, but first I have to tell you, my, my dad in Toronto, 89-year-old father, had... Um, a, a, like a heart valve replacement surgery and wanted me to make sure you knew that the only thing he paid for in our single payer universal health care system was parking. <laughs> That's, well, I, I would hope that everybody uh, in this country hears that because we remain the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people. A lot to be learned from the Canadians. Which would be great. If that could be on the next president's agenda, uh, it would involve more than winning uh, the White House, but um, uh, it would be great if we, can, if we could get to that point. Whatever model one wants to choose, they're, they're all kind of better than ours. Um, so what is it that you would like to get in order to get your endorsement? What sort of commitments are you looking for from Vice well, President look, Harris? Uh, all right, look, uh, I'm gonna do everything I can to defeat Donald Trump, clearly the most dangerous president in our history, uh, somebody who doesn't believe in democracy or the right of women to control their own bodies. We don't talk about it enough. I this guy it. thinks climate change is a hoax in the midst of us experiencing the warmest day uh, on earth on record. Uh, so he has got to be defeated. Uh, what I have worried about, as you know, Ali, for a long time, is it pains me as somebody who comes from a working class family, that right now uh, a majority of working class people support the Republicans who could care less about the needs of working families. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the Democratic Party has over the decades turned its back on working people. And I think an important exception to that is Joe Biden. Uh, Joe has been the first president in American history to walk on a picket line, appointed a really strong Secretary of Labor, good people, National Labor Relations Board. And I think has put together the most progressive agenda and accomplishments of any president in modern history. But what I hope we can do in this campaign is let the working class of this country, white and black and Latino, understand that we see, we understand the pain mm -hmm. that they are experiencing. You know, we are looking at massive income and wealth inequality. Mm -hmm. Ali, the truth of the economy now. People on top are doing phenomenally well. 60% of our people are living paycheck to paycheck. We talked about health care. Our health care system is broken, dysfunctional. We've got yes. half of our elderly people trying to get by on 30000 or less. We have a child care system totally broken. Uh, we have got to start paying attention to the needs of the working class of this country and stand up to powerful special interests who have enormous power, not only in the Republican Party, but I have... This guy is talking what now, guy, and um, and I think he's really fight for for the middle class people for sure, for sure, is for sure. Why? Because he's the one who fight, fight, fight. He fought for the minimum raise. He want the minimum raise to be raised. He's worried about people can even afford to pay to pay bill. People can even afford to pay uh, their own bill because the job doesn't pay enough for somebody who probably living in a house, expensive house, or maybe somebody who pay, who can get a nice car, drive around. He's the guy who fight for another, uh, Senator uh, Benny Sander. Benny Sander, this is the one he fight for, it, guy. It is for sure. Everything he just say what now is his shoes. And then I believe if I be able uh, to vote, I would vote him because He's really, he's really fight for Will God, for sure, for the middle class.
American people. And anybody doesn't know that, that means they don't pay attention. He's the one who fight, who wears the minimum wage all over the United States. Thank you. Uh, let's listen to it again. To say in the Democratic Party as well. So if you got a, uh, I mean, clearly you've had this list because you can rhyme it off uh, off the top of your head. Is there are there particular commitments you want from Kamala Harris that you felt like you had from Joe Biden? Well, as you know, President uh, President Biden. Uh, supported a 100-day agenda, said that the first 100 days he would do things like uh, expanding Social Security benefits. All right, 25% of our people, elderly people on Social Security, living on $15,000 a year. We can do that by lifting the cap on taxable income and extend the life of Social Security by 75 years. Medicare, well, look, between you and me, as you well know, the, the Congress is not ready to move to Medicare mm -hmm. for all, which I support. But you know what you could do and what the President Biden wants to do? Expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing, and vision. All right? Yes. We can raise the minimum wage yes. to a living way. We can cancel I just all say student that. debt. I just we said it. We can put a cap on uh, rising rents in this country and build millions of units of affordable housing. We could deal with the child care crisis. Uh, we can do those things and more. And make it clear to the working class that we are prepared to take on the big money interest who have never had it so good. He and is by right, the way, guys. in the midst of all this, Ali, we got to start talking about a corrupt political system. Guy, listen. Everything he said he meant, he fight, he fight for sure. He fight for the minimum was he fight, he fight, he fight. The minimum was finally is passed. And he keep fight for it. Everything he just say right there. Senator Bernie, he mean every single thing he say, guy. Because I've watched him a lot. He is damn good. As a result of Citizens United, mm -hmm. where Elon Musk is now trying to buy the election for Trump, $45 million a month. Too many billionaires are, put, uh, are controlling the political process. We got to... So, and... Um, And uh, what everything he just coming out and saying it is is really he's a really honest guy, and uh, he never run for president, and then he want the, demo, the, 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 the 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 Democrat Party to get him better, and he's right. And listen to him again, and before we move and to the next, and that overturn Citizens United and move to public funding of elections. In my view, so there's nothing in anything you've said that would suggest that. You'd spend a minute thinking about Donald Trump as a presidential candidate. So, what's the difference between you sure. working really hard to uh, overcome Donald Trump's uh, election as president and endorsing Kamala Harris? I right, well, look. We all work. You know where I am right now. I'm in Manchester, New Hampshire. We just had a great town meeting here, talking about the need uh, to uh, elect the vice president. Uh, we were in West Lebanon. I'm going to be in Bangor, Maine tomorrow. Portland, Maine. That's what I'm doing. But I think it's important for some of us to say, look. We know that there's a lot of big money in the Democratic Party. We want to make sure uh, that the vice president is listening to the working class of this country, to progressives as well, and brings forth very specific ideas. These are not radical ideas. Expanding Medicare by lifting the cap, expanding uh, Social Security, building housing. These are not radical ideas. No. And I would hope very much that we get some specificity. Oh, is yeah. that in order to get that specificity? Is that conversation ha happening in in real time right now? Are you are you in that conversation with the vice president, or your people in the conversation with the vice president's campaign? Well, I have talked to the vice president and look forward to speaking to her uh, again in the near future. And, and yeah, that, that conversation is going on. Got it. Uh, talk to me about what that would do for you differently. In other words, you getting those assurances, you're, you're going out there, you're telling people in all those places you just named that they've got to vote for the vice president. What will happen when you get the assurances you, you want, which I suspect you'll Look, get? I, I hope I do get them. I hope I do. Uh, look, we cannot, this country cannot, in my view, just tolerate Donald Trump's getting elected. So I am out there. I work hard. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Harris is our next president. But I just am trying. You know, it, it, it pains me personally, again, coming from a working class background, that so many workers, especially white workers, 
are turning their backs on the Democratic Party. And I think we can bring them in if we give them if we give them an understanding we know what's going on in their lives the pain they're experiencing and that we have an agenda so that their kids are not going to have a lower standard of living than they do so that they can afford to go to a doctor so that they can be easier for them to join a union so that we raise the minimum wage these are not radical ideas and the democratic party has got to start addressing them uh, at every level do you feel that there's a little more energy in this race than there was a week ago Oh, absolutely. It seems to me you were just discussing it a moment ago. Getting 160,000 people on a Zoom call, that is, to say the least, pretty crazy. That is a way out. But yeah, I think there is a lot of uh, energy, and I hope uh, it can be maintained. Much she lied to the American people. According to Elon, politicians like Kamala Harris are destroying America. Then Musk mocked Kamala Harris and accused her of purposely spreading misinformation. Also, Musk revealed what he thinks about Kamala replacing Biden. It's obvious that Biden will likely be replaced, and Kamala is the main choice, so Musk had an interesting reaction to the situation. This is a very interesting story, so let's explain everything. Kamala Harris stated that people were justified in comparing former President Donald Trump's recent remarks about immigrants poisoning the blood of America to those of Adolf Hitler. It is language that is meant to divide us. It is a language that I think people have rightly found similar to the language of Hitler, Harris said in an interview with MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell. Harris also stated that even though people criticize Biden for his age and speculate about his cognitive decline, he is still the best candidate to beat Donald Trump. Then Elon Musk criticized Kamala Harris on the social media platform X. He accused her of lying about former President Donald Trump's stance on abortion. Musk shared a screenshot of Harris's comment and questioned when politicians or those managing their accounts. That's exactly, we're talking about policy. And I, a couple months ago, uh, Elon Musk said he's not going to support any candidate. He's not going to give money to nobody. And then everybody, he hit, now he's giving out $45 million every month to the former President Donald Trump. So it's policy. Man, I had no comment to say about that. Let's talk. Why is Amazon paying me twenty thousand dollars? Why is Amazon paying me sixty-three thousand?